now that we're in Unity, let's bring in those textures that we made. So I'll go to Textures. In my case, it'll be Props, Ship Parts, and then they're in Wings. So I could right click here and go into Import New Asset, but that only lets you import uh, one asset at a time. We need to bring in four. So just a good time saving technique. I can go directly to my file browser and then we need four textures here. We have our diffuse map, our material mask, our normal map, and our paint mask. So I'll just drag those in. All right now that we have those, let's load up Shader Forge. So I actually already had it over load it up, but in case you don't, you can find it if you have it in your project directory, then you can go up to Window, Shader Forge. So I'll hit New Shader, and I need a lit, physically based rendering shader. So this is what you'll get by default if you choose that preset. Now, if you've never used a node-based material editor before, this is what they look like. You have your material node here, which has a bunch of different inputs, and then you have what are known as nodes, these little blocks and these wires. Now, what the wires are doing is they are basically translating data from one node to the next. For example, this is a multiply node. It needs two numbers to multiply, so we're giving it two pieces of data. We're giving it a base color, in this case this would be your texture, and some other color node. It's passing those two pieces of information along the wires, and then it is going to send the result of that along this wire to our base color input on our material. Now, we need mostly new nodes here, and we don't need most of what's already present. So I'm going to get rid of the multiply node, so I'll just select it and delete it. The color node, because we're going to be replacing that with our own color. And I'm going to keep these two here, just because our shader won't actually compile without them. Now, to use these nodes, you can click and drag them around to move them into a new spot. In Shader Forge, at least, they will actually snap when they are on top of each other. It just sort of helps with alignment. And then to drag out the wires, you just click and hold on whatever output or actually, yeah, whatever output you need. And you just drag that wire out to whatever input you need. Now, my setup here is going left to right, so all the inputs for a node will be on the left side. As you see here, we have our UV and our texture inputs, and all the outputs, like our color channels, will be on the right side. Okay, so let's bring in all the pieces of data that we're going to need. Now, we need our diffuse texture, our normal map texture, both of our mask textures, our material mask and our paint mask, and the two paint colors that we plan on using. We also need a slider like this to determine how much of a hue adjustment we want in our paint color. Now, those types of nodes for pieces of data that we're bringing in from outside or pieces of data that the user or the level designer is supposed to be able to adjust or pieces of information that need to be publicly accessible by scripts or other objects in your game are known as property nodes. And they're identified by this light greenish hue. As you see here on the left, we have our properties tab and it's colored the same way. And this just gives us information on every single piece of external data or public data would be more accurate that our material uses. So we're gonna need a few more of these. We need a we need two more Texture 2D nodes, which are basically just texture inputs. We can find them by either typing up here in the search bar on the right, TEX for Texture 2D, and then we can click and drag that out, 
or a bit of a faster way is if you hold down T it'll give you every single node that starts with the letter T and it'll default to be on texture 2D. So I'll click on that and then we get a texture 2D node. So I'll rename that to material mask and then I need another one for my paint mask. Now we also need some colors. So if I hold down C for color, I can then scroll through this menu that we get until I get to color. So I'll call this one main paint and then I'll need another one whoops for accent paint. Let me make this window a little bit bigger. All right. Oh, one more. I need a slider, so that's S. And I'm going to call this one Hue Adjustment. I'm going to leave that one alone for now, but we're going to be changing some of these values later. So, to continue, let's first load up the textures that we're going to need. So I can pick this select right here and it'll give me all the textures I have in my project directory. I need the ones for the model that you saw me working with in 3D codes. Now I happen to know that those are identified by the word steel. So that's my color map. This is my normal map. Oh, and as you see, something looks a little off here in our little preview ball. And that's because our normal map texture has not actually been identified as, or has not been set to be a normal map as opposed to a regular texture map. So to do that, this is actually an option that you can set on import. If I just minimize this real quick, just so you know. Inside of my wings texture folder here, if I go to this texture, which is what we brought in from 3D Coat, you'll see that the texture type is set to texture, which could just be our mask texture or our diffuse texture. For normal maps, it needs to be a little different. We need to set it to normal map. And then we need to uncheck create from grayscale. Create from grayscale will try to generate a normal map based off of a black and white height map. We don't want to do this because our texture is already a normal map. So I'll uncheck that and I'll hit apply. Now our normal map is properly set. And I can turn on normal map here. And now you can see that our normals are coming across appropriately. But let's get this onto the actual object it's supposed to be mapped to, rather than this default sphere. So I'll click this little target icon up here. And these are the two meshes that this is ultimately supposed to be mapped to. I'll do the left one. And as you can see, it's starting to look very good. We have our normal details there. We got our paneling and our scratches and our dents. But it is far, far too shiny. And there's two reasons for this. One is that we aren't getting our roughness values from the material mask. We're getting them from this slider. The second reason is because the rendering workflow or the rendering setup that Shader Forge uses by default is based off of a metalness and glossiness setting, whereas in 3D Coat it's based off of metalness and roughness. If I open up 3D Coat here real quick and I go to textures, the export import workflow that I've been using is roughness and metalness rather than gloss and metalness. 
Now I typically stay on roughness and metalness because that is actually the default workflow for Unreal Engine, but I need to change Shader Forge to respect this. So if I go over here to Lighting, I can change the gloss mode from gloss to roughness. And now it looks a little bit closer to what we want. However, it's still getting its input from this slider rather than from our material mask. So let's bring in that material mask and then also our paint mask so that we can start making progress on the shader itself. <laughs> 